her up for your 20 minute cross nomination to William. Right. So William, I understand that you may quote church fathers left and right to support your position a lot and no argument with you doing that. Okay. Um, so no problem. First thing I'm just trying to, to understand is, uh, on, on what basis will the final generation of believers all pass instantly into uh, the eternal presence of God, be resurrected? Uh, why will the final generation of, it could be hundreds of millions of people, not need sure. to go through purgatory? There could be billions of people, Dr. Brown. That's a fantastic question. There could be billions of exceptions of people that don't have to go through purgatory. But there, there is the, the, the prime part where... You don't understand what purgatory is, Dr. Brown. And I said it in my opening statement. Purgatory can happen in an instant. It's not necessarily a place. It can happen instantaneously. In fact, if you look at 1 Corinthians 3, where we clearly see the man is going through a purificatory fire, we're not told whether this occurs within an hour, two hours, or anything within human time parameters. So we don't know how long it takes. We don't know whether it's an actual place or not. The church has never definitively defined whether or not purgatory is a place or a state. I personally think it would be a state. So whether or not there's exceptions, we have it right there in 1 Corinthians 3. Clearly taught, without a shadow of a doubt, in 1 Corinthians 3, which was unanimously taught by every early church father, including the early councils.